there's another kind of instinct that you need to be on the lookout for. And this one is a liar. This one is a saboteur. This one is a backbiter. This is the instinct that says, you've had enough. You've given it your best shot. You can stand down. You can back off. You can rest now. Which sets up this problem for all of us. You're never gonna feel like it. It's your job to make yourself do the crap you don't wanna do so you can be everything that you're supposed to be. And you're so damn busy waiting to feel like it. And you're never going to. And that's the problem. There are those of you, you're still immature. When your excitement is up, your effort is up. But when your excitement goes down, your effort goes down. For some of you, you're too seasonal. When you're excited, man, you come into work the first week, the first month, the first three months when you got that job, you were excited, and so you was putting forth effort. You on blame. Not you got comfortable. And you're not excited no more. And guess what happened? Your effort has gone down. So do me a favor. Get off of that feeling stuff. Get off your excitement. We're not dealing with feelings because feelings go up and down. You don't have to be excited. You made a commitment to that job. Didn't nobody force you to take that job. You signed your name on the dotted line. And commitment said, I don't care how I feel. I don't care if I'm excited. I don't care if I'm pumped up. I don't care if I'm fired up. You made a commitment. Now it's time to put up. Lazy people do a little work and think they should be winning. But winners work as hard as possible and still worry if they're being lazy. So if you're a winner, you ain't comfortable. Every day I get up and give everything I got to everything I'm a part of simply because this is who I am. Like the only thing I need every day of my life is 86,400 seconds. That's it. Like I don't need some reward. Like the only thing I need is breath in my body and I'm flat out going, get it. A person with passion always stands out. The world is so full of average. But once you have passion and a sense of energy in your life, it distinguishes you. When you're passionate about something, it isn't reasonable, but you do it anyway. Passion will take you where nothing else will ever take you. It'll give you that decided edge. It'll help you to stand out. When you want to become a diamond, your whole attitude change, your whole mindset, your thinking, your relationships, the decisions that you make, how you spend your time, your energy, all of it changes. See, this is something that you can't be in this business. This business has to be in you. You take advantage of this opportunity. You let everything else go. You eat different. You study different. You practice different. You don't belong at the bottom. And it's time for you to get your butt from down there. It's time for you to stop being comfortable at the bottom. Get your butt up and get to where you're supposed to be. You are a royal priesthood. Get where you belong. Do what you're supposed to do. Live like you're supposed to live. Get better every day. Socrates didn't know much. There wasn't much he held for certain. But he was sure, he said, that we cannot remain as we are. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you've done. Nobody is as good as they could be. Nobody is perfect. Everybody can improve. There are few self-fulfilling prophecies more important or more dangerous than this. If you think you have room to grow, you do and you will. If you think you're as good as you can be, you're right, you won't get any better. It has been said that Tom Brady, the greatest quarterback in history, the youngest and the oldest to win a Super Bowl, isn't obsessed with winning. That's not what he focuses on. He's obsessed with improving the accuracy of his touchdown passes in the fourth quarter. He's obsessed with getting a little bit faster at releasing the football. He's not willing to stay the same, even though that same is very consistently the best in the league. The process of getting better, that's his drug. That's the dragon he chases, that's how he is able to defy aging and all expectations. The Japanese word for this is Kaizen. Continual improvement. Always finding something to work on, to make a little progress on. Never being satisfied, always looking to grow. Revolution, transformation, 
That's what amateurs chase. The pros are after evolution. If the first step is just showing up, committing to doing something each day, then the next step is finding something to focus on getting better at each day. And in this where cumulative improvement meets compounding returns, we can harness one of the most powerful forces on earth. Think about it. Most people don't even show up. Of the people who do, most don't really push themselves. So to show up and be disciplined about daily improvement. You are the rarest of the rare, and if improvement sounds difficult, how about just making fewer mistakes? This is what Gehrig's manager said about him. The secret to Gehrig's incredible trajectory as an athlete wasn't just his commitment. It was that he never made the same mistake twice. The guy who began his career blowing at least one play per inning improved to one mistake per game, to one per week, to one per month. To err is human. But to err is each day is to become closer to the divine. We not only hold ourselves to a standard, but we ratchet the standard up as we go. Just as with weight training, what we're lifting should be steadily increasing with each subsequent workout. Our unwillingness to be satisfied with our performance, to be done with our progress, is what keeps us from plateauing. It drives us forward. Is it a little discouraging that we never seem to arrive? That our standards rise just out of reach of our abilities? Absolutely not. We move the goalpost so the game doesn't get boring, and more important, so it never ends. Ultimately, this brings us more pleasure and more satisfaction. We reach heights we'd never have been able to see otherwise. Do you want to be rotting or ripening? Are you getting better? Because if you're not, then you're probably getting worse. Anyone, whether they're a, a professional athlete or a house cleaner, can get better at their job. You can get better at being a person, a citizen, a son or a daughter. You can get better at how you think, how you focus, what you think about. Just as one person delights in improving his farm and another his horse, Epictetus would say, riffing as it happens on Socrates. So I delight in attending to my improvement day by day. He said this as a man who clawed his way out of slavery. He said this from exile. He said this as one of the wisest men in the ancient world. And still, he was focused on how he could get better every day, in every way. One can imagine that, for Epictetus, this discipline would have been extremely helpful in those dark times, because it gave him something to focus on, something only he controlled, not his master, not society, not his station in life. But this discipline is also helpful in the good times, too, preventing one from getting too cocky or complacent. It doesn't matter what the scoreboard says, or the bank balance, or the sales figures, or the headlines. You know, you know whether you're getting better or worse, whether you're making progress day to day. And if you are, wonderful. If you know there is room for improvement, also wonderful. Either way, your marching orders are the same. Come what may, success or failure, fame or misfortune. A focus on progress lets us look ourselves in the mirror with pride and ignore all the commotion in the background. It's the journey of a lifetime. In fact, that's the way to think about all of this. How much progress could you make if you made just a little each day over the course of an entire life? What might this journey look like? Where might it lead if each bit of progress you made presented both the opportunity and the obligation to make a little more progress? And you seized those opportunities you lived up to those obligations each and every time. Will you choose to take this journey? Will you continue on, even when you've reached further than you ever thought you could go? Or will you stop there? Are you going to keep practicing? Or have you decided that this is good enough? That you're good enough? Will you remain as you are? Or become what you're capable of? Because once you stop getting better, there's only one direction to go. Do the best you can. The Emperor says in Marguerite Yosena's beautiful novel, Memoirs of Hadrian, do it over again. Then still improve, even if ever so slightly, those retouches. It's a beautiful irony. You're never content with your progress, and yet you're always content. Because you're making progress. What does it mean to live an infinite life? Clearly our lives are finite. 
We're born, we die, we come, we go. But life is infinite. The game of life will continue with us or without us. Which means every single one of us has a choice. We don't get to choose the nature of the game. Life is infinite. We don't even get to choose if we want to play in the game or not. Once you're born, you're in it. We get one choice. Do you want to play with a finite mindset? Or do you want to play with an infinite mindset? To play with a finite mindset means waking up every day and say, I'm going to be the best. I'm going to be better than everybody else. I'm going to accumulate more power, more responsibility, more money, whatever it is, whatever, whatever your metric is, I'm going, to, I'm going to get more than anybody else. Me. And when you die, you take none of it with you. Or we can choose to live our lives with an infinite mindset, which means I'm going to leave this world, this school, in better shape than I found it. It means I'm going to devote my life to see that those around me rise. And we know that we're living with an infinite mindset because our obsession is seeing that we have an impact on the lives of the people around us. We've all had teachers, and some of you are those teachers, where 20 or 30 years from now, I can go to one of your students and say, you're a remarkable human being. You've accomplished so much in your life. How did you become the person you are today? And they will tell me your name. We all remember the teacher who believed in us. We all remember the teacher who had our backs. We all remember the teacher who saw something in us that nobody else saw. We've forgotten all the others, but we remember those couple. And that's what it means to live with an infinite mindset. It means we devote ourselves to that mindset for everyone in our lives. That other teachers will say that about us. Other principals will say that about us. Other students will say that about us. Our friends will say that about us. I am who I am today because of you. And I will commit to live the same life that you taught me how to live. And you will literally live on beyond your own lifestyle, your own lifetime. That when you're gone, others will carry your work for you. This is what it means to live an infinite life, and it is just a choice. Nobody changes until they change their energy. When you change your energy, you change your life. It's the way it is. When you stop using your enemy to reaffirm your addiction to hatred, when you stop using your best friend to reaffirm your addiction to suffering, when you stop using your Facebook to reaffirm your addiction to insecurity, mm -hmm. when you stop that whole process mm -hmm. and you start going inward and you're no longer relying on those outer things to create those emotions and you start creating those inner emotional states, you start changing your energy. Now, whatever is no longer a vibration vibrational match between you and that past present reality is going to fall away. Right. They're just going to spiral out. You're no longer putting your attention on them. In other words, the stronger the emotion you feel with some problem in your life, the more you give it your attention. Where you place your attention is where you place your energy. You're giving your power away, your life yeah. force. Yeah. Lower the volumes of that emotion. You take your attention off that person. You're calling energy back to you yeah. and you're building your own electromagnetic field. We've right. seen the evidence of that in many events because when people start overcoming themselves, the first day, not always, but the energy of the room will drop. Why? Because they're drawing from the field to build their own field. Now when they build their own field the next day and the fields start interfering with the people next to them, whoop, the energy in the room just keeps going up. So now there's no longer a vibrational match between you and your coworker. Be prepared yeah. because that old known thing is going to fall away because you're no longer emotionally and energetically connected to it. So then when we, you get in that state, it's not a time to try to put it back together because at the same time these things are unraveling and they're moving towards chaos and chaos is just unpredictable order. Right. It's novelty. The the newness of an experience that you can't predict is chaos. If you apply the formula, and all potentials in the quantum field exist as electromagnetic potentials. They are possibilities. When they begin to synchronize coherently your brain and heart, you got a strong Wi-Fi signal because now you're putting out a very laser coherent signal right. when there's a synchronization between your energy and that potential that exists in the future, but it really exists in the present moment because that's where they exist in the quantum. Now you start to see synchronicities in your life and those are breadcrumbs from the field like keep going yeah. keep going you're on to something